Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship on this day that we come to God's house to receive from him those good gifts that he desires to give us, forgiveness, life, and salvation. And in turn, we give thanks to God for his goodness, and we are called to share that good news with others. In the gospel reading today, there is the account of Jesus appearing to the disciples, and first he had to calm their fears, and then Luke tells us that Jesus opened their minds to the scriptures, and then they were to open their mouths to speak of Jesus as God and Lord. And in the same way, we too have our minds open to the scriptures, and we are called to share the good news of Jesus crucified and risen with the world. And Pastor Block is going to expound more on that in the sermon today. If you are a visitor with us or a guest of one of our members, we're happy to have you with us. And we invite you to worship with us again. If you could take some time during the service today to register your attendance on the record of fellowship and make sure that everyone in the pew has had the opportunity to do that, we'd appreciate it. We're going to follow divine service setting four that begins on page 203. And our opening hymn this morning, hymn number 464, The Strife is O'er, The Battle Done. Please note that the choir will sing verse three. God's blessings on your worship today.
invite you to stand as we begin with the confession and absolution on page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray together the prayer for the day printed in the bulletin. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raise up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We speak also together that word for the month from 1 John 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, verse 7. You may be seated for the further reading of God's Word. The first reading from Acts chapter 3, beginning with verse 11. 
While the lame man who was now healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading from 1 John 3, beginning with verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing the Alleluia in verse. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, 
that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together we confess our Christian faith using the Nicene Creed on page 206. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sing together the hymn, Who Are You That Walk in Sorrow? Hymn 476. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message is from Luke 24, again verse 47. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins be preached in his name to all nations. This is God's Word. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, so here we are on the third Sunday of Easter, and the news still seems hard to believe. Christ is risen, we say, and yet somewhere in the more rational recesses of our minds, there's this little flicker of doubt that goes, really? How can we know for sure beyond a reasonable doubt, at least, or to some reasonable certainty. How do we know, really, anything of the past to be true? You know, some people think that the only way to truth is science, hard data, and tests. CSI, crime scene investigations, they always cinch the case with cold, hard facts. And that's why the phrase, studies have shown, is so compelling. It has kind of this impressive ring of truth to it. Even if you've never seen the data, you assume it's true because, well, studies have shown it to be true. Well, studies have shown that eggs at once were bad for you. Later, studies have shown that eggs weren't so bad after all, and studies show that eggs actually have health benefits for you. Some talk about a leap of faith and believe something is true because we we want to believe it. It's kind of a bit like bungee jumping. Jump off a cliff or a bridge and hope that that big rubber band will hold you even though you haven't tested it. People trust the government, though governments don't have a very good track record regarding truth-telling. Would you give over a third of your income and the nurture of your children to a total stranger just because they say, trust me? We confess that we believe in the resurrection of the body. And that's the whole point of Easter. The body of Jesus is risen, and our bodies will rise on the great last day, guaranteed by the resurrection of Christ. But how do we know it's true? How can we know that it's better to trust Jesus instead of Muhammad or the Buddha or the Dalai Lama or our own gut feeling? In Luke, the fact of Jesus' resurrection is always underscored by a meal. Jesus appeared to the two disciples in Emmaus at a meal. They were prevented from recognizing him earlier, even though one of them, Cleopas, was the brother of Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, making him Jesus' uncle. But they immediately recognized him when he broke the bread at the dinner table. And those two men immediately rushed back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples. And when they get there, the disciples tell them that, well, Jesus has already appeared to Simon. And as they're comparing notes, Jesus appears in their midst and he says, Peace be with you. That's the Easter greeting. It's how you speak of the resurrection. Death is defeated. The grave cannot hold us. Sin forgiven. Life restored. There is peace. And so, peace be with you. The disciples were startled, afraid, and doubting they think that maybe they're seeing ghosts but this is no ghost or illusion Jesus shows them his hands and his feet those wounds by which we are healed the mark or they mark forever Jesus as the crucified one the one who laid down his life for us for the sins of the whole world These wounds also authenticate him. This is the lamb who was slain 
but lives. And Jesus invites them to touch him. He's touchable, real, bone of our bones, flesh of our flesh. And that's why we believe that our bodies will rise from the dead. And we don't go on just as spirits or souls because Jesus rose bodily from the dead. His tomb is empty. And the disciples not only saw Jesus, they touched him, flesh and bone. Still not convinced? Still uncertain? Dead men don't ordinarily rise. So Jesus takes a piece of broiled fish, we're told, left over from dinner, and he eats it right in front of them. Now, it's not that he was hungry, and he wasn't looking for a snack. More evidence. Ghosts don't eat fish, or really anything for that matter. The flesh and blood Jesus consumed a real piece of real fish, eating is a body thing. But there's something much more going on here, something a bit fishy, as it were. Psalm 74 says, You crushed the heads of Leviathan. You gave him as food for the creatures of the wilderness. Remember Leviathan? He was the great sea monster, the dragon of the sea, the devil. The image here is that Leviathan was being served up as an appetizer at the great messianic feast, the messianic banquet, which is why the Jews always had a course of fish on the Friday evening before the Sabbath meal. It's why Roman Catholics traditionally eat fish on Friday, why Jesus multiplied bread and fish in the wilderness. Jesus is eating fish in the resurrection is a sign that he has conquered death and the devil, who is now served up as a first course. Fish as food never represents Jesus. No, he's the bread of life. He's the living bread, but he's not fish. Instead, Jesus is the one who swallows death and the devil. Death is swallowed up in victory. Jesus does more than snack on fish with his disciples, though. He sends them out. Resurrection, appearance, and sending always go together, too. You see, what is seen now must be told. Eyewitnesses must tell what they have seen and what they have heard. First, the risen Lord Jesus validates the scriptures, what we call the Old Testament, Moses, the prophets, and the writings or psalms. It's all about him, Jesus, and his death and resurrection. That's the key to understanding the Old Testament. Look for Jesus. Even before the name of Jesus was known, even before the Son took our humanity, the entire Old Testament testified to him. The Bible is the record of the mystery dwelling among us. The word that made all things at the beginning. The promise to one man named Abraham who created a nation out of nothing enslaved people. The word that brought freedom from slavery, split the Red Sea, carved out the only nation in the history of the world that could be called God's nation. Embedded in Israel's history, all of its battles, ups and downs, successes and failures, strengths and weaknesses, is this one message. That the Christ, God's anointed one, the Messiah, would suffer and die and on the third day rise again. Centuries, literally thousands of years before any of it happened, it was written down and handed on all pointing to that one very good Friday when Jesus said, it is finished. And then Jesus did something remarkable. He opened their minds. Does that strike you as strange? They're standing there, seeing him eat fish, 
They know their Bibles. They've been instructed personally for, from Jesus for three whole years. And yet, even now, Jesus must open their minds. You know, this reminds us that you can know all the facts and still not believe. You can know the Bible by heart and still not trust that it is for you. No, we're born sinful and close-minded. Sin has shut our minds from God and given us a God delusion. We think that we are the gods. We believe our word carries the day. We think we're masters of our own destiny. In the third article of the Apostles' Creed, our catechism teaches us plainly, I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. Our reason alone cannot get us there. Our minds are closed to our own salvation. They must be pried open by the Spirit of Christ. They must be opened to understand the Scriptures. As St. Paul says, these things are spiritually discerned. And that's why we just don't go around handing out Bibles, as good as that idea sounds. That's why Jesus didn't leave us with a book, but with apostles to testify, ministers to preach, a church to proclaim a baptism and a supper. The resurrection of Jesus is a historic fact. That is true. But it is much, much more than that. It is gospel. It's good news. It's a living word from a living God preached into our ears that pries open closed minds and turns hardened, sinful hearts to the forgiveness of sins. Though the death and resurrection of Jesus is anchored in history, these things are much, much more than just mere history. These are your life and your salvation and your hope of the resurrection to eternal life with God. Think for just a second about how you came to believe. Someone told you. Maybe that telling was your parents bringing you to baptism as a baby and then to church and to Sunday school as a child. Maybe that telling came from a friend or a co-worker or a neighbor. Someone told you. The disciples told what they had seen and heard, beginning in Jerusalem and going as far as they could in their lives. Church tradition says that John made it to Asia Minor. Thomas went as far as India. St. Paul, who wasn't one of the twelve initially, took it all over the Mediterranean world in his lifetime. The good news in our time now has come to our ears as much as a gift to us as that first Easter was to those disciples. You in succession now tell others what you have been told. That's how it works. It's not the most efficient way probably to get things done, but it's God's way, so who's going to argue with God? You are witnesses, testifying to what you have seen and heard, bearing witness to the fact of the resurrection of Jesus and the world's death and resurrection in him. There are no professional witnesses in God's church, no hired experts. They're simply disciples, sent into a world sprinkled as salt over the earth, cast as light out into the darkness. Remember this as you tell others. Faith is not founded on feelings, but on facts. Lay out the facts. The cross, the open, empty tomb, the depositions of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John the entire Old Testament scriptures which can make people wise for salvation in Christ Jesus. The sacramental signs, the visible and tangible ways that Jesus reveals himself to us in baptism, the supper of his body and blood, 
the word of forgiveness. This dying, confused, messed up world doesn't need religious opinions or mantras or methods or programs. It requires one death and one resurrection. The one with the words and the wounds of salvation. The one who has swallowed up death like a piece of royal fish. The one to whom Moses and the prophets and the Psalms testify. Jesus Christ, your Lord, your God. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding then guard our hearts and minds through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to life everlasting. Amen. As our offerings are brought forward, we sing together the hymn, He is a Risen, Glorious Word, hymn 488. Lord God, receive our tithes and offerings and thanks for your many blessings to us. Thank you for your hand of blessing upon the faith in our future campaign and the many who have supported it with their time, talents, and treasures. Be with the upcoming work and projects this summer that they may be accomplished well. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, in your presence we find fullness of joy, and by your right hand, Christ Jesus, you win and deliver peace forevermore. In the midst of this world's sins and sorrows, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation on his cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name among us and all the nations of the world. We ask especially that you would be with Slava Shadron, Slava Boincheco, James and Crystal Neuendorf, Leif Camp, Thomas Bernard, Chuck Ferry, Matthew Prince, Jonathan Lorenz, John Wolfe, and Anna Binter. Lord, in your mercy, Give peace, Lord, to our homes, and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Assure those who live alone that they too are your children, upheld by your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders, especially Joseph, our president, and Eric, our governor. Preserve order and decency in this fallen world, especially in Israel, Gaza, and Ukraine, by the hands of those you have placed in authority, so that they may restrain the sins and deceptions of the lawless, and that we may practice righteousness, while awaiting the eternal peace promised in Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, you have compassion on those who are afflicted, 
Remember and have mercy on Jerry Wascom, Amelia McCormick, Jackson Emkes, Dave Rungy, Scott Fleetwood, Victor Schneider, Jim Hurt, Irma Barger, Peggy Honstrider, Ann Mahan, Greg Prangy, Marsha Beach, and all those in need of your healing and deliverance. Lord, in your mercy. Our Lord, in his eternal will, called home to heaven Rabel Newkirk on April 10th. He was given Christian burial on April 13th. Let us pray for this family. Gracious God, you called Rabel to, your, to be your own many years ago, and now he has received his promised inheritance. Comfort his family as they grieve, but assure them of the sure and certain hope of reunion and life together forever. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, continue to give wisdom and guidance to Paul Scheider and his family as he deliberates his calls to Emmanuel and to New Haven, Indiana. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of marriage and ask that you continue to bring joy and delight to Tom and Joretta Bullard, who celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary on April 11th. Grant joy, love, and delight in one another for many years to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the birth of Ezekiel Liam Mellencamp, son of Matt and Rachel Mellencamp, on April 12th. Watch over mother and baby and bring Ezekiel soon to the waters of holy baptism, where he will be made a member of your eternal family. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, we give you thanks that you continue to enlarge and preserve your family by making disciples through baptism. We give you thanks for Emery Noel Hill, daughter of David and Autumn Hill, who was baptized on April 12th. For Kai Stephen Rammel, son of Spencer Rammel and Katie Kleber, who was baptized on April 13th. For Vance Paul Hill, the son of Tyler and Casey Hill, who will be baptized on April 14th. And for Kennedy Jean Colwell and Harlow Elise Arnold, daughters of Gabe Arnold and Teal Colwell, who will be baptized today as well on April 14th. In holy baptism, you have forgiven them their sins and granted them new life in the Holy Spirit. Strengthen their faith and continue to equip their parents to raise their children in the fear, love, and knowledge of you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by your Son's crucifixion, all sins have been blotted out. Send us now the blessed refreshment of his bodily presence and the sacrament of the altar, and make us fit partakers in repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament, beginning on page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death, he has redeemed us from bondage to sin and death. And by his resurrection, he has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body given into death, and drinking his life's blood poured out for our salvation, until we pass through death to the promised land of life eternal. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. A few announcements to bring to your attention that are in the informer today. Bible classes start today, so please select one that you would like and attend. We're looking forward to seeing you there. There's an adult senior ministry event this Wednesday, April 17th at 1130. And the Summer Fest, which is kind of being rebranded from the Barn Bash, is scheduled for June 7th. Tickets are now on sale for that event. We look forward to seeing as many as possible at that too. Finally, VBS registration is now live on the website, so please go and sign up for that fun event this summer too. Our closing hymn today is Spread the Reign of God the Lord, Hymn 830. God's blessings on your day and your week. <laughs>